the glory, hallelujah. Let's magnify him, hallelujah. We don't need a crowd to bless him, hallelujah. Oh, we don't need a whole bunch of people to welcome him in. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory today. We bless your name, oh God. We magnify you, God, for you are good. You are great. You are kind. You are wonderful. There is nobody like you nowhere, God. You are the end of our searching. You are our peace. You are our joy. You are our confidence. You are our confidant. We thank you for wholeness. We thank you for realness. We thank you for your holiness magnifying in us now and now we give you the glory we give you the honor we bless your name your name is great your name is all we need your name is matchless we thank you for the name of Jesus to which every knee shall bow every tongue confess we thank you right now for the bowing of sickness to the name of Jesus. For the bowing of torment to the name of Jesus. For the bowing of infirmity to the name of Jesus. We thank you that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We thank you, O oh God, that you have gathered us today to hear from you, oh God. And now we ask you, God, forgive us for every sin. For all sin is unrighteousness. Forgive us for the sin of omission. Forgive us for the sin of commission. Forgive us for the sin of pride. Forgive us for under the Bacaya. Forgive us for the sin of arrogance. Forgive us for the sin of presumptuousness. Oh, God, no flesh glory in your presence. We thank you now, God, for you being magnified. We take down that you be glorified. You be lifted up. You be exalted. We thank you for filling us today. Oh, let your spirit flow in this place. Flow, flow, flow. Flow, flow, flow. Flow, flow, flow. Flow from heart to heart. From breast to breast. Let your word meet every need. But we know that you can. We know that you will. We thank you for your ability. Surpasses our inability. We thank you now for enabling every vessel to give you glory. We thank you for changing our mind about our circumstances. We look and say, it is finished. It is finished. We will not lose because you are with us. We thank you that you go before us and make everything impossible and possibility. We thank you that all things are possible to him that believes. We thank you that our faith is secure. In you, oh God, there is no failure. With you, there is no end. With you, there is only success. We thank you that the possibilities are endless. With you, oh God, we're walking with you. We choose to go with you. We choose to stay with you. No matter the storm, we choose to stay with you. No matter the heartache, we never come to kneel behind. We choose to stay with you. No matter the disappointment, because we know you to be a God that's balanced. You won't let us suffer more than you bless us. You won't let us endure more than you rain on us. Right? Rain, rain, rain. Show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself powerful. We know, we know, we know, we know, we know 
that you are not finished. Blessing us. Come on and clap your hands. Prepare the room for the blessing. Prepare your heart for the blessing. Prepare your mind for the new thing. God gonna move. God gonna move. God gonna move. He gonna settle. He gonna settle it all. He gonna settle it all. I see somebody running with the victory. I see somebody waving their hands for the victory. I see tears of joy for the victory. Hold on. God is coming. God is coming. God is coming. Don't you dare give up. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. The spirit is moving now. He wants you to change your mind. Don't give up. Tear up them funeral papers. It ain't time to die. It's time to live. Live. Live, 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 live. Live, 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 live. You ain't too old. You're not too young for God to make up the shortage. He gonna make up the slack. He gonna make up every tear. He got your tears number. He got your pain number. He got your heartache number. And he gonna bless. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless him. Come on, somebody bless our God. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the praise. Somebody lift it up. Hallelujah. Our God is worthy of it. Hallelujah. Come on, we came to lift up our Savior. Hallelujah. We came to lift up the Redeemer. He's worthy of the glory. And he's worthy of the honor. We gonna have a good time in God this afternoon. Is that all right? It's all right to have a good time in God. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. Oh, I want you to repeat that to me. Oh, you say.
is worthy of a praise. We owe it to him. We owe him into our God. We owe him our best praise. We owe him a hallelujah. We owe him a thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, you're worthy.
Send up glory to the healer. Send up glory to the deliverer. Send up glory to the way maker. God, we honor you. God, we bless you. God, we glorify 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 you. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of the glory. And we give it to you. We give it to you. We give it to you, God. Hallelujah. Now come on and lift your hands and worship him. Come on and worship him. Come on and honor him. Come on and glorify him. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. We lift you high. Yahweh. Yahweh. We lift you high. Perfect atmosphere to worship Him. Woo. It's a perfect atmosphere to worship Him. you God and we reverence you God 
and we honor you, God, and we reverence you, God. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 And we thank you, Father. Oh God, thank you, God. Thank you for being in a room today, God. Thank you for being in our presence on today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's hard to come out of this. It's hard to come out of this. Thank you for setting the atmosphere, God. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks and honor to God for being here this morning for visiting us this morning in the sanctuary. Everybody don't get this. Sometimes we take it for granted that he show up. But we won't take it for granted today. We give him what's due him on today. We give him what's due him on today. We give him what's due unto him today. Woo! Shonda. Bishop Triplett to get me if I don't teach this word. <laughs> Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all calm down. <laughs> I'm, I'm here on assignment this morning. I'm the, I'm the teach. Can I get some tissue? Y'all got me crying up here. Lord, I thank you. Um, give an honor to Bishop Hudson, Archbishop Hudson, our father, our leader, the one we confide in the one who prays for us through all of our trials and tribulations. He stands in the gap for his people. And our pastor, Andrea Hudson, who stands by his side, who also prays for us, who also renders herself unto the Lord on our behalf. And we thank God for them. We thank God for the anointing that's on their life. And we thank you, Bishop Triplett, Thank you for always encouraging. Thank you for choosing me to bring the word today. And I also want to acknowledge Pastor Deirdre Cunningham from Transformation Center uh, for being here. See, it's a setup. You go ask her to pray. Lord, ask her to pray before I get up. I thank you. But God, <laughs> that is the mantle that's on her life. And I thank God that she has... Definitely, definitely saturate this pulpit before I got up. Thank you, Lord. So we'll be coming from a very familiar book. We'll be coming from Exodus on today. We're going to come from Exodus chapter 33, 7 through 19. But no worries. I'm not going to read it all at once. Bishop Triplett said, don't be reading all that. We can, we can don't be reading all that. We go, we go catch up with you. Just um, go ahead and teach the word, but we will read scripture, so I pray you have your Bibles and your notes. But today from Exodus, it would teach us how to stay free from our past. God brings us from our past, brings us out of our past, but how do we stay free from our past? But before we begin dealing directly with the main text where our lesson will be extrapolated from, I want to give you some foundational reasons to what's possibly keeping you from what you need to grow in God and to move with God. 
It's so important to know that God puts a sense of purpose on the inside of us, of each and every last one of us, a longing to want something bigger, a longing to want something better, a longing to want something more than what we have right now. See, when we don't have a, a healthy view of who God is or a healthy perspective as to what God wants for our life, we sometimes place that energy into something that wasn't even purposed for our life, something that wasn't even ordained for our life. See, when you don't have a healthy perspective or a view of God, um, we sometimes... We see, see what we do with God and how we see God matters. That's right. Let me start there. How we see God matters. How we see God has rewards. Uh -huh. How we see God also have major consequences. Yeah. The perspective of God or the false view of who God is will sometimes destroy our walk with God. All right. All right. It definitely does. People check your perspective. Like the children of Israel in the past chapter, um, chapter 32, they saw God as unfair. Y'all know the story. They saw God as unfair. You know, the children of Israel complained, you took me out of the comfort of slavery. <laughs> That's an oxymoron right there. Um, under Pharaoh, where I had all the food I wanted, where I had all the clean water to drink and baths and a roof over our head. And you brought us out here in this dirty wilderness that's taken forever to get to the land of freedom from which you said would flow milk and honey. Therefore, take me back to what I'm used to. Take me back what I'm used to. Ain't that what we do sometimes when we're not familiar with where God is taking us? Is looking new. Take me back to what I'm used to. Yeah, it was torture. Yeah, it was hell. But at least I know what to expect. Every morning I got up. If he was going to beat me, at least I knew what was coming. At least I could prepare my mind already for what's going to happen. I knew what to expect. I knew what was waiting on me. Which leads me to a point of how we see God and what's keeping us from being 100 with God. You know, the kids say, keep it 100. What's keeping us 100 with God in full force with God? They saw God also as uncaring and unpresent they've been gone out of Egypt now probably for about three months three months now but while in slavery God showed himself to the children of Israel through signs and miracles he was speaking to them all the time while they was in Egypt get ready to leave out how about when we first get saved we always we tell everybody I heard God and you did I felt God and I did but the closer you get to God and the closer your walk is to God, he don't have to speak as clearly. He don't have to speak as loud to get your attention because he's shown himself. He's proven himself. He was speaking all the time while they was heading out of Egypt. Now it appears that he has left them. He's not speaking as loud. Therefore, they don't feel and they don't see his presence anymore. They cry, he's left me. He abandoned me. He left us out here in this wilderness. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, but have you ever felt abandoned by God? Listen, I know you're saved, for real. I know you're saved. I know this even sounds crazy. Um, I'm not judging you. I promise I'm not. But have you ever felt abandoned by God, have your situation ever left you feeling abandoned by God? Even in knowing that God is a caring God, he's a caring father who wouldn't abandon his children. But sometimes if we're honest, we're projecting what our family has done to us onto God. When he's been there the whole time. For he said in this word in Deuteronomy that he would never leave us nor forsake us. They had, so thirdly, they had their own vision, version, and vision of who God was. You know, we see our own version of God. You know, the one that we create in our head. 
Instead of the God we know when life is good, when life isn't life in as much, when things are going well. But as soon as life gets to life in, we create in our minds this unfair and unpresent God. The God, you know, the devil do come to steal, kill, and destroy. And once he get our mind and get our spirit, our emotions follow. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy all of those. But your perspective of God will hinder and taint your truth about God, keeping you from being led by God. For this teaching, I began studying of the life of Moses and how God uses Moses powerfully, despite Moses' irregular past. You know, Moses killed somebody. Moses had anger issues. And I've learned in reading this that our past does not disqualify God's purpose for our life. It don't disqualify us. Moses was mad and he saw the man of God, not the man of God, but one of Pharaoh's troop men beating on one of his own people and he got angry and slew him. Though we may be pained by our past and our shortcomings and transgressions even from our family history, our past does not disqualify us from being used by God. Focusing on our past weaknesses will have us perplexed in our present. It'll have you so confused in your walk with God right now when he done already brought you out. Moses have been he must have been really enduring with enduring perplexity and confusion when God called him I know I was God do you know what I've done God do you know what I've said and you even know what I'm capable of but yet you gonna call me just imagine what Moses was thinking he was a part of the enemy's camp at one point. And you going to call me to lead the people who I prefer put in captivity or help put in captivity. You got to be kidding me. But God meets us in our everydayness of life. Is everydayness a word? I like how that sounds. In our everydayness of life. So now let's move to our chapter in which... We will be um, getting this lesson from, I just wanted to give you a brief background of the story that's coming. Now we're in Exodus 33, where we see God's covenant with the children of Israel. The whole chapter 3 is about the covenant of God with the children of Israel. And in verses 1 through 6, God threatened to wipe out the people who he rescued from slavery because of their unfaithfulness to him. Yeah. They down there building other altars and gods, and I done freed y'all and fed y'all, and, 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 and I'm getting rid of all of them. I'm getting rid of, now we say that about our own kids. I thought, you done got smart with me. We said like, you done got smart with me, I would take you up out of here. I brought you in this room, and i take you out. So we can, we, can, we can relate to God right here, right? He ain't mean, he's fair. Why did they, see what they did was they eagerly entered into a covenant with God before they even received the written terms and agreement. Right. That's true. They haven't even received the commandments yet. That's true. They probably would have changed their mind. But no, they, they, they received it. They received it. <laughs> they had violated their core commitment, but Moses offers himself instead. He said, kill me. Take me and lay me let the people live and let me die. That's what Moses said. He was willing to sacrifice himself for the lives of his people. He interceded and God honored the prayer to not kill the children of Israel. And he also rejected Moses' offer for God to kill him. See, God already had a man in mind for that. He already had a man in mind to offer a living sacrifice way up in Matthew, Matthew 27. God had a plan, but his plan wasn't Moses. 
Moses has blood on his hands. God needed a blameless man, a man without sin, a perfect man, one without anger in his heart. As I said before, Moses had anger in his heart. Moses could not lead like Jesus could lead. But Moses could lead and free them from slavery, but Jesus could deliver them from their sin. That's why he couldn't be the living sacrifice. Moses gave manna from heaven, but Jesus gave the bread of life. Through him, we will have eternal life. In him, our father is waiting for us to meet him in glory. In case y'all forgot, I'm still talking about being staying free <laughs> from our past. While everyone else remember, the, my point is why everybody else remember the blood on our hands. That's why Jesus had to come. <laughs> Why everybody remember God wipes it out. But people would definitely bring it back up to bed. God gave the ultimate sacrifice of his son, Jesus. So Moses, no, God got this. I'm rolling with God. Now, dealing with our targeted text of learning, Moses meet God at a tent in verse 7. Um, and Moses took the tabernacle. Y'all there? 33 and 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp afar off from the camp and called it a tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out into the tabernacle and all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle, verse 9. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. 10. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand in the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaking to his friend, and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. So far, the scripture. Here we see the relationship between God and Moses, which brings my first point. To be free from your past, you must build a relationship with God. Moses used the tent to pitch outside of the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meetings. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to this tent of meetings outside the camp. And whenever Moses went to the tent, all the people rose up and stood at the entrance of their tents because they knew that the cloud would come. So that meant God was present with Moses, right? God and Moses the scripture tells us we're friends. The Lord spoke with Moses face to face, which speaks of the reality and the depth of communion between Moses and God. Moses was God's friend. Not because he was perfect, though. Not because he was gifted, though. Not because he was powerful. They were friends because friends trust each other. They were friends because friends could trust each other and share common interests. One, no one can drive a wedge between true friends. Moses built God a relationship, a relationship with God. He took his own time and built God a tent where he can go meet and talk with his friends. You must build a relationship with God. Even the first part of verse 12, you see their relationship. Moses sees, he says, see, thou sayest unto me, <laughs> bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I will see thee by name. I will know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face, and he said, these your people. See, these your people. Don't that sound like familiar conversation you would have with a friend? So, again, this also tells us 
that, you know, how close he is with God. And see, now yo, Moses is using and taking advantage of his privilege of speaking with God with this familiar language. <laughs> see? See? See, God, you told me to lead your people. They're not his people no more. They're disobedient, so, so they God people now. Sometimes I tell, I tell my son, come get your son. <laughs> come get your son. This your seed. Come and get him because he ain't, he ain't acting like man right now. <laughs> and what I love about Moses is Moses never knew where he was going with God. Have y'all noticed that? He never knew where he was going with God. God didn't always provide a sign to direct him, but it didn't matter. That's my friend. I trust him. For he knew, he knew whom he was going with. He knew whom he was going with. So he wasn't even worried. The guidance of, 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 of hinges the relationship. So he's allowing God to, to, to guide him and lead him for it didn't matter of anything else. Moses was a real person who had real encounters with the real God. Because remember, they made, they made other gods down there, but he had a relationship with the real God. The relationship provides him with direction and guidance he desired. The guidance hinges the relationship. If we seek the guide more than guidance, did y'all catch that? It's two different things. If we seek the guide more than guidance, we just might see the signs we're looking for. We might just see them, which is my second point. Staying free from your past, you must allow God to, you, you, to guide you out of it. And be open to his guidance. Not everybody open to his guidance. Y'all not going to be real. Y'all not going to be real. When I got saved and the word said, don't have sex, I did not want to follow his guidance. When I was clubbing <laughs> and I liked to dance and I liked to step and God said, come from amongst them, you're to be different, you're to be set aside, you're to be set apart. I wasn't trying to go in God's guidance. Verse 12 said, Moses said unto him, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people. And thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. <laughs> None. No company whatsoever. I, God said, he said, you said you know me by name and I found favor in your sight. Now I have indeed found favor in your sight. Please teach me your way and I will know you. And find favor in your sight. Yes. Now consider this. He reminds them again. This is your people. Wow. <laughs> That's that relationship again. Now consider this. This is your people. Show me thy way. See now Moses was desperate for a sign. He needed a sign again. He's like God you ain't, you ain't doing it like you used to. You ain't, you ain't treating me like you used to. I'm coming to you as a friend. Treat me like you used to. <laughs> Moses was no different from us, though. He wanted, to, he, he wanted God to show him a sign, too. And one occasion, Moses got away. He said, okay, I got to get away. I ain't going to just have, you know, camp right here. I'm, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go along the way and ask God, you know, a, away from everybody else and seek God direction. He wanted another divine Facebook post. He wanted an inbox, an omen, a heavenly gesture. It's not that Moses didn't have these indicators before the journey or after the journey. In fact, we all read and witnessed, and he witnessed a rather remarkable visual demonstration. A burning bush. Y'all remember the burning bush? The staff that became a snake. The tree branches that cleaned up the polluted water. Yes. Pillars of fire leading the, when they're going through the wilderness, the pillars of fire leading them throughout the, um, the desert. Yes. And then clouds meeting them from the burning sun in the morning, covering them. Yes. That was God. At first years ago, I, you know, when I first started reading the Bible, you know, when we knew in God, we very disciplined in reading this word. Right? 
I'm on the train, the red line, and I and I got and I got mad with God. I would get on the train and 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 drive and sometimes and go to the end of the line just to get peace to read the word of God because I can't go nowhere. If I'm on the train, I can't go nowhere. I'm just sitting on the train riding. And and when I used to read the word, I would get mad at Moses. I would say the nerve of Moses. How is he going to talk to God? Like, although the word said he friends with him, but how he really going to talk like he a friend of God? Because we still have to give some type of reverence to, the, to, to God. How rude. <laughs> but now that I've been through some things, <laughs> you know, grandma used to say, well, just keep on living, baby. <laughs> But now that I've been through some things and I've matured in the understanding of God and who God is, I find myself reminding God of our relationship in order to get the guidance I need. I am a chosen vessel of God. I remind him of that. I'm a chosen vessel. I am the elect of God. You said that I am the lender and not the borrower. You said that I am the head, I'm not the tail. You said that I am above only, I'm not beneath. You said that a cat on a thousand hills is yours and I am your child. I am an heir of yours. That you would give me everlasting love. I am your child. I have to remind him. When I'm going through, I got to remind, hey, I'm your child. I've been redeemed and washed by your blood. <laughs> See about me. I reminded God, and sometimes you have to remind God of your relationship. But if you don't have one, you can't remind him of anything. Everything you throwing up there going to come right back down on top of your head because he ain't receiving none of it because he do not recognize your voice. Whose voice is this? I don't recognize it. We don't want that from God. Moses was guided by God. Moses built a relationship with God. He reminded God of who he said he was and who he was in the relationship with him. Now Moses asked God to be his God. Didn't he? Don't we want to be guided by God, yes. to be taught by God, yes. to be taught his ways by him, yes. to know the paths we are to take, yes. to be shown the right way? Yes. We are a people hungry for guidance. Yes. Every day we should be hungry for God's guidance. We long for directions. We are the wandering. We wandering in the desert too. Sometimes we wandering in the desert too, crying out to God, show me the way. Give me a sign. Just right in the sky. There's a ribbon in the sky. Give me a sign in the sky. Interestingly, though, God never wrote Moses a message in the sky. He never laid a blueprint down. In today's term, he did not send a text message to Moses, an email or a letter, but he did do something better. He did do something better in verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. God gave Moses something better. God gave Moses his presence. So that's my third point. Seek God's presence. Wow. <laughs> do you seek God's presence? And how do you seek God's presence? People always say, do this, do that, but they don't tell you how. No. Seek God's presence. What did Moses do? Moses prayed. You seek God's presence through prayer. God replied to Moses' prayer request for a sign by saying, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. God personally and, and, and without even planning, led Moses and, and the nation of Israel. He was mad at them, so he wasn't planning on leading them. But because Moses, he's going to send an angel. It said his word. He said, I sent an angel. But because Moses prayed, God decided to go with them instead of sending a representation. But Moses prayed, and because he seek God's presence, God offered something better, which was his guidance. He promised to be their God. He promised to accompany them, to be with them. He was not the God that only lived in the heaven domain. He was a God that came down 
He was a God who's shown himself to his people. No other images that they built was able to come and do anything for them. It stood in one place. The statue of Baal stood in one place. It never moved. They never received the move of God from their God. Only the one true God. Through the, though the Bible never uses the word guidance, it does speak of guide. What a God we serve, willing to guide us and seek us and provide us his personal self to guide us. Which would you prefer in a tough situation? Would you prefer a map or somebody kind to grab your hand and say, hey, I've been where you are. I've been where you're going. Grab my hand. Let me walk you up out of this. Do you want a map or do you want the hand of God? And, and he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. There's an old hymn. Um, Pastor Cunningham got me listening to hymns. There's an old hymn I heard before, though, that, that Granny Roberts used to sing. And it said, and he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share, we tarry there. None other has ever known. I wish I knew how to sing. I wish I knew how to sing. (laughs) Regardless of our conditions, regardless of our circumstances, God is always with us. I did this. I, I see in our situations that God don't change. Our situations change, but God don't change. He is still with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, if you go with us, your people, in verse 15 and 16, he said, if you go with us, if your presence go not with us, carry us not up this. For where then shall it be known here that I am thy people and have found grace in thy sight? And it is not that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, and I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. In other words, if you go with us, God, your people will be distinguished. From everybody in this world, your people will be distinguished. I suppose we all want to be distinguishable, set aside, set apart. God's presence doesn't just, you know, just just sit on us. It moves us. And when you get God's presence, you get his glory too. You get his glory too. His presence in my life is stronger than any platform I can build myself. I would never, he would never, ever go ahead without you. He would never leave you behind. I would never go without him. I don't care what platform you throw me. If God not there, if God not before me, I'm not going. I'm not going. Hallelujah. We too, when led by God, do not see God's face if you read on, because for the sake of time, I'm going to just go ahead to my next point. When, 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 because now he asking God to show him his presence, and God honors him. So God shows him his glory. But he doesn't show him all of his glory. We too, when led by God, want to see the face of God, but we can't. But God will show us his back. Why is that? We cannot see his face because we cannot see him coming. God is always ahead of us. We can't see him coming. We see God's back because of where he's been. We can now look in the rear view mirror back at our life and say, oh my God, that was God back then. Only God could have done that. Only God could have been with me with that. Only God could have saved my life from that. So we don't anticipate or second guess God. It's only after long reflections do we realize God had been with us the whole time. So to stay free from your past, what is your perspective? How do you view God? You have to build a relationship with God. 
How do you do that? Through prayer. And then when you pray, then his presence come. Right? When you pray, his presence come. And when his presence come, we on a move. We on a move with God. You can stand. Hallelujah. 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 We, not, we may not see how God uses us, but we don't have to be paralyzed from our future. He's not going to always show us. But that doesn't mean he's not with us. That doesn't mean he hasn't taken care of everything before we get there. He took care of these seats before you sat down. But by faith, you sat down. That's God's presence that you didn't fall. We didn't put our trust in the chair. We put our trust in the God that held the chair. Hallelujah. Be free from your past. You don't have to go back to it. He's already freed you from it. Don't complain. Don't complain because your deliverance don't look like everybody else's deliverance. That God's presence and friendship with you don't look like somebody else's friendship with you. It look like he may have a different relationship with her, which look grander than the one he had with mine. Mine is intimate. Sometimes you ain't going to see mine outside screaming because I don't have to scream. My walk should tell you. Last week, Pastor Paula preached on holiness, Lord. She preached on holiness. If my walk doesn't line up, holiness will bring the presence of God. So therefore, my walk has to be holy. And if my walk is holy, the presence of God comes. And he will stay with you, leading you, constantly leading you because it's a forever walk with him. It's a forever walk. And God, I thank you for these, your people, Lord God. Father, I thank you for bringing us out, Father. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus, who sacrificed his life that we may live victoriously, God. That we, may, we don't have to live by our past mistakes, God. Though man may judge us, Lord God, but Father, you are the ultimate judge. And we thank you. And we thank you for your forgiving heart, for your love and kindness, for your gentle mercy, for your grace, God. I thank you for the relationship I have with you, God. And Father, when we desire your strong will, God, cause us to build another strong one with you, an even better relationship with you. Hallelujah, God. He desires all of us to build a relationship with him. Don't go off of what he did in the past. Create a new relationship in God. Create a new relationship with God. There's some new things he want to do with us. But we can't go off of old prayer. Pray for God's presence. Hallelujah. Pray for his presence and his glory will meet you in your prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your relationship. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, God. Thank you, Lord. Woo. If it had not been for God. Ah, na, 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 na. And we thank you, God. And we thank you, God. For you will never leave us. 
Our situations may act may make us think you left us, God. Situations causes us to forget who you are. But you are an awesome, God. You are caring, God. You are loving, God. Lord, I must say. And we find safety in you, God. You are a friend we can trust. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Woo. And we love you today, God. Hallelujah. Now I'll bring to you the powerhouse announcements. Tonight at 7 p.m. is Bible study. Bishop Hudson will be teaching, teach me how to worship. When you have a relationship with God, it won't be hard to worship him. On Thursday, April 18th at 7 p.m., we are praying in the sanctuary. Friday, April 19th at 7 p.m., travel with the bishop to Wisconsin. First Jurisdiction, Kojic, the Lily of the Valley District Conference with Dr. Michael Bivens. Friday, April 19th, Family Game Night from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. All ages are welcome, but minors need to be accompanied by an adult. Food, fellowship, fun, and prizes. Tickets are $5 per person. Saturday, April 20th, Please join the pastoral care section session as they discuss family energy resources from 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the dining hall at the Powerhouse Chicago with guest speaker Lynette Pennington. Hallelujah. These are our ways to give. It's time to give. It is time to give. You could give Cash App. You could give Zelle. You can give, secure give, and we thank you, God, and we honor you, Lord. You are in the hands of the ushers as they give you offering envelopes, and we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has everyone had the chance to give? Now as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, cover us with your blood. Keep your angels around us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen.